Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to episode number 154 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. You know the place right here, the Knife Junkie Podcast, where we get to talk to anybody and everybody in the knife world, the knife makers, the knife designers, the manufacturers, the reviewers, anyone who loves knives. That's what we're all about here on the Knife Junkie Podcast, our weekend Sunday interview show. And uh, Bob, who are you having the pleasure of chatting with today? Uh, today I'm speaking with the purveyor of Asher knives, Justin Cotton. Uh, they make affordable EDC knives with premium design and premium materials. And uh, I'm not sure how they do it, but they get some pretty <laughs> amazing knives to market. And we're going to find out uh, how they do it today. So yeah, we're going to find out in just a second when you uh, when you uh, interview Justin Cotton of Asher Knives. That's coming up. But first, I do want to remind you that our podcast today is brought to you in part by the um, Get Upside app. It's a way for you to uh, save money on your gas purchases. Just get the up, uh, Get Upside app. Uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas, the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas. You can download that app on your smartphone, either Android or uh, uh, Apple, and uh, you can start saving money anytime that you need to purchase gas. I use it uh, every single time that I uh, purchase gas. It's a great way to uh, save money, and uh, hopefully, you will start too. Ever start looking for your next knife purchase before your last purchase has even arrived? Then you're probably a knife junkie. It's true. I do. Justin Cotton of Asher Knives, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for coming Hi. on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, it's nice to meet you, too. So yeah. um, you've kind of just come onto my radar recently, uh, but in yeah. a strong way. Uh, there are a <clears throat> lot of uh, guys out there uh, who review knives who are checking out your work and uh, singing uh, singing your praises highly. I got a couple of models in hand, three, uh, yep. from um, Justin over at Tier One. Uh, we know him a lot. He comes on our Thursday Night Knife show a lot. And uh, he loaned me three knives. And they're very impressive. Tell me, how did you get into this knife business? Uh, I've always been a, a knife guy. I mean, my, my whole life, I've always loved pocket knives. And really, I got into it because I... I'm sure a lot of people have gone through this. I've I've ordered a lot of knives and I never was able to find the, you know, the the one knife that I've it was just like perfect, you know, that I, it was the one knife that, that ended them all for me. And everybody it's called the Grail obviously and everyone's looking for that that knife. Um so whenever my son was born, um I'm in real estate. That's my, you know, my main main job. And when my wife had to go back to school after he was born, I had a lot of time because newborns sleep a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I figured it was time to, uh, it, it would give me time to try to, you know, design my first knife and um, bring it to fruition. And I started from square one, <laughs> really. I mean, I had no idea, you know, how to have them manufactured, how to have, you know, who to go to for design, um, where I even had to start. So, I spent quite a few months really just figuring out what I had to do to, you know, what steps I, what steps were needed to be taken to have those knives made. And, um, the first one I made was the classic that you have there. Yeah. And, uh, I have mine as well. And my, this is like my baby, you know, <laughs> this is the very first one. So I actually designed this with, uh, a old manila folder. You know, I cut out the pieces, and use toothpicks as pivot points. And, uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough to find a really great CAD designer in uh, Kansas. And I went back and forth with him because I'm not an expert in CAD. Um, and I figured instead of me trying to learn how to be proficient and an expert in CAD, I can, uh, I could find someone that knows what he's doing and he could really help me out. So, uh, I started working with him, uh, it took us about two months to, really nailed down the design and i learned a lot in that two months you know there's a lot of things that you have to fit, factor in whenever you do a folding knife and um once we had it done and i 
had the step file, you know, to to send out to a manufacturer. Um, that was hard as well to find a, a trustworthy manufacturer that kind of understood what I was going for. And uh, it started out in Taiwan. Actually, I had a, uh, a really great smaller shop in Taiwan. They did a fantastic job. I mean, they, they did a really great job. That took about 45 to 90 days to from start to finish for me sending it to them to me getting the, the finished product. Um, but it was a real great learning experience for me. <laughs> And I've learned how to kind of streamline that process from these uh, the next three that I put out. Okay, so let's back up. You're a knife guy, obviously. Yeah, and you have, I am. You have uh, extra time on your hands because you've got a newborn, your wife's at school, house yeah. is quiet, you know, for large stretches of time. Yeah. Uh, so I've been in that situation twice. Um, yeah. But I've Congratulations. Never, uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And uh, I've been a knife uh, junkie that whole time. But yeah. uh, and drew quite a bit of designs, never made that extra step. What is that one step, that one little kernel that got you to take it from something that you're just interested in to something that you're like, wait a second, I'm going to stake something on this yeah. and, and make knives? Well, uh, first of all, lucky enough, I was lucky enough to uh, do pretty well in real estate to the point where I, I had a little bit of capital that I was able to, to put towards this. So that's number one. I mean, if you don't have the capital to, to do it, it's it's really hard to do. I mean, you can go on, you know, Kickstarter and, and, and do it that way. And there's been a lot of successful knives might be the smarter way to do it because you, you've already had, you know, uh, customers in, you know, they've already bought your knife. So mm -hmm. I, I sort of took a bigger risk in in producing them and then hoping that I'd find customers afterwards. Uh, so some people would say that was dumb. <laughs> uh, it's the way that I went with it. Uh, but really, the the uh, the first step was actually finding something that works. You know, whenever I found the designer and said, OK, I could, you know, I could put this into a file for you and I could design a, you know, uh, the knife that you want to make. I could I could put it in a digital file so you could send it off to the, you know, the manufacturers. Once I was able to get that piece down, then that kind of gave me a drive to to move on to the next step, which was you know, finding the manufacturer. And again, I had no idea where, you know, I went to Google to find, you know, I typed in knife manufacturers, um, Taiwan, China, everywhere. And it's really hard to, to figure that out if you don't have someone telling you what, what to do or, you know, where to even start to look. So that was also a pretty big situation because I was sending them money, <laughs> you know, without really yeah. knowing. And, you know, I mean, he's halfway across the world and they have to be, I, I have to trust that they're a trustworthy business. So did, and, you, uh, uh, did you have a mentor through any of this? Did you have anyone? No. no. Yeah. Okay. It would have been easier. <laughs> so you been easier are the mentor. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you me. know, what? I've always, I've always felt that learning um, on the, on the job, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you, if you could figure it out as you go, um, it makes it a lot easier down the line. And if I could, if anybody has any questions about that, I, I'm always more than happy to to guide them in the direction so they don't have to take those, you know, they don't have to take the steps that I had to take to, to get to that point. Okay, so you decide, I'm going to make a knife. This is going to be a reality. And yeah. the first knife that you make is the is the classic, which um, yeah. of, the, of the three knives I've been sent, man, I, I adore it. Like I was telling you before we started rolling, uh, yeah. I come in and out periodically of of a traditional knife uh, yeah. uh, collecting phase, and uh, whether or not I'm in one, this would appeal <laughs> to me for for that that purpose. It has a, a profile and a, and a, a, you know an obvious purpose to it that that harkens to that stuff. So, tell me how you decided on this style of knife, and then the process you went to to through with this uh, uh, designer in Kansas to come up with a design for this. So. I just, I love classic knives. You know, I've always loved the Barlow. You know, the Barlow has been, it, if I could carry that conveniently, I would I would probably carry a Barlow all the time. But, you know, I, I love the shape. I love to have it. My grandfather, you know, my, my dad's father, or grandfather, uh, I, I got two Barlows from him that Ooh. were so, now it's patina, you know, but he used it so much and he had these knives for so long. And I wish I wouldn't have got them so young because I lost them. And it's, it drives me crazy, you know, but that always stuck in my mind, you know, that, that this kind of shape, 
and I was really specifically looking for a Barlow knife type knife that was a little bit more updated that I could actually carry every day. Um, and I started thinking about the the things that I like in my other knives that I got and, you know, the, the ball bearings to make it easier to flip open, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the thumb studs to make it easier, the pocket clip, obviously, uh, titanium. So I try, I really tried to, to incorporate those in the classic style. And really what I did was, like I said, when I took a manila folder and, and cut out the, the pieces for it, and I took a photo of that and I sent it to the, to the, uh, designer and he was able to, take that and put it in, put a rough sketch in. And then we went back and forth to, to really refine it. And, um, you know, I ended up with this. <laughs> that was so, really happy. So uh, you, you get the design, you have the, whatever the CAD file is and, yeah. you, and you've selected your manufacturer um, yeah. at this point. And I'm not sure, and we'll get to this, uh, but if I forget, remind me, I'm not sure if all your knives are made from the same people, but you find the people yeah. that make that. Okay. No, you find yeah. the people that make this, you get the design off. Then, then how does it go down? So I send my file to them and then they actually, so I run it sort of like the real estate business as well. You know, I, I do the things that I know how to do. And then I leave, I, I hire people. I try to hire people that can give me the, the best quality and they're professional, so I leave it to them. So when I send this to the manufacturer, you know, in Taiwan, I have to think that they're professional, they know what they're, you know, they know what they're doing, they've done this more times than I have. So if there's any little tweak that needs done, instead of me trying to figure that out, they look at the, they look at the design and say, okay, well, this would work better if you did, you know, if you put the clip here, or, you know, if you put the, the uh, screws down here, and I just, I trust them to, to know how to do that. And, uh, you know, that, again, that takes a bit of trust, you know, whenever you're dealing with somebody that you've never really met, you, you never met in person, obviously, but you've never really talked to over the phone. Uh, it's a lot of emails back and forth, but whenever it come, you know, whenever you get the final design, if it looks exactly or as close as you can to your, your original, you know, rendering, and you're happy with the prod, you know, you're happy with the outlook. And if they're able to get it even, you know, uh, as close as possible as the rendering that they send you, that's a win. You know, <laughs> in my book, from what I've found with the other knives, sometimes there's little variations whenever you actually get the knife, you know, from just the, the rendering. Like the prototypes when you get the prototypes back? Yeah, exactly. When you get the prototypes back, I mean... You know, you want everything to be perfect, but it, it really never is. You know, you get real excited about it and then you get the prototype. You're like, oh, man, that, you know, this angle of the grind isn't right. Or, you know, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not opening correctly. You know, we have to fix that. Or there's a lot of different little things that you have to make sure that are right before you make that, you know, if you place that large order for them to chip it over. Because once you place it, you know, the money's money's gone and you're. Kind of just hope that you have a great, you know, a great product product to sell to people. And it's going to be exactly like that last iteration, that exactly. last prototype. So you better get it dialed in. Well, I, That's I gotta exactly say, it. I got to say, though, I mean, um, to me, having the material thing, having the prototype uh, could be that thing that bridges any sort of language gap that there might be. I'm sure the the uh, the Taiwanese manufacturers have people who are, speak English better than you and I, but... Uh, at the same time, yeah, yeah. almost there. Not, yeah, <laughs> almost but there. They speak better than my Taiwanese or Chinese, yeah. or whatever. But uh, but to have it in hand and be able to say, eh, a little bit off the, a little bit off the top or whatever. And that's hard to. That's really. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's nope. really hard to. Uh, you know, when you're looking at something, and you're like, how do I, how do I communicate this over email? You know, it, it's a lot of pictures and circling areas and trying to trying to, to tell them what you mean, because, you know, I'm sure you know as well. I mean, you look at different knives and you're like, well, there's just something that I don't, you know, I don't like about this, or there's something that I would have changed. And how do you put that into words? You know, especially with someone that doesn't speak English as their first language, it's, it's yeah. not easy. <laughs> and, and also this is, this was your first time out. And, yeah. uh, you know, when you're, what, you have people in the knife business saying, "Ah, oh, this is how it's done." You might, I could see how you could feel the pressure to say, "Okay, maybe, maybe leave that thumb stud the way it is, or whatever it, it yeah. happens to be." Um, 
But uh, I mean, obviously, you got over any of that uh, quickly. These uh, the three knives I have, and then looking on your website, show a real confidence of uh, design and purpose. What uh, when you set out to to uh, to start Asher Knives, and you told me before we started rolling, Asher is the name of your son. I think that is yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, so cool to name your company after your son. Uh, maybe someday it'll be Asher and Sons. Yeah, Asher and Sons. Yeah, Which that'd would be great. Your <laughs> grandchildren, if you think about it. But uh, in any case, um, uh, how, so you went from this design, which is a very confident, uh, traditionally inspired modern folding knife, and then yeah. you move on to uh, the other ones I have in hand uh, are the Silva. Yes, this is a uh, titanium frame lock folder featuring an S thirty five VN uh, blade that's beautifully ground, and then yeah. you have the Nomad and the Sentry. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, and then and then this uh, fixed blade, uh, which I want to talk about in a minute, uh, that I sure. did not see on your website. But so, where does the uh, design inspiration come, and how do you decide? Let me ask you that just first. Yeah. Where does the design inspiration for these come from? Yeah, uh, so I would have to say over the the course of my owning uh, uh, various different knives the the thoughts in my head were you know every time that i didn't like something about the knife or something that i really liked about the knife but it could have added something differently or uh, again it's one of those things it's kind of hard to put into to to words but i knew that i like j just that for the nomad okay i knew that i, I really like the draw point you know draw point blade um i wanted to pick the best steel that i could within my budget uh, that I could, that I could comfortably, you know, put out that, that capital. And I feel comfortable enough that I'd be able to, to get a return enough of a return from those knives that I would be able to go out and, you know, do another design and another design. Um, that's the one thing I regret about the, the classic is I, I use D2 steel. I love, you know, I love D2 steel. It's, it's, it's a good all around work steel but it, it caps the um, the amount that you could sell, you know, this knife for. Now, if this if this knife was in, you know, S35 or, uh, you know, if it was in M390, which would be awesome, uh, I'd be able to sell it for a lot more because this was very expensive to, to produce. And that's one of the things you learn, you know, on your first go around is you really have to, to make sure that you leave yourself some, uh, just enough of a gap that, that, you're able to make it a, you know, a, a profitable enough business that you can cover the cost for the the materials and you can go and, uh, you know, make more designs and keep, keep doing that. Cause I have a ton of designs in my head. Um, but you have to have the capital to, to make them a reality. Well, that's a, that's a, a really interesting, um, conundrum. It's like, uh, uh, I could spend more money on a higher end steel in the manufacture of it and risk, uh, being out a, a, a huge bundle, or yeah. I could spend less on on a totally great steel. D two is an awesome steel, yeah. And uh, but but not not have the cred to charge, uh, you know what I well, might see, need to recover the cost or make the profit. That's the thing. I mean, I had no credibility at all, and I still don't think I have a, a crazy amount of credibility. You know, I'm just I, I'm just starting out, and the people that that have really welcomed me in the, D the EDC community and the, the, you know, the knife community, really, it's, it's been humbling really because I came out of nowhere, you know, I could be anybody. Um, but I found that if I'm open and honest with people and I, I never thought that I'd have the back and forth that I would with, with my customers, with all the people that, you know, comment on, on Instagram and Reddit, Reddit's a little bit harder than, <laughs> than Instagram for sure. But uh, I never thought I'd be so involved in in talking to these people. But really, you you find that uh, there's a lot of great people. Number one in the EDC and knife community, and if you give them a, a decent product, they'll, they'll back you. You know, they'll they'll really they'll, yeah. they'll back you with their their hard earned money, and you know, they're uh, they'll take pictures of your knife and and say how much they like it. Uh, but that's a big risk whenever you're you know just starting out. I, I'd love to to make a great knife, M390, my, my car dub, you know, handles. Uh, but if no one buys it because they don't know your company, you know, yeah. it could be a great knife. But 
you know, then I'm sitting on a box, boxes of awesome knives yeah. and my wife's killing me because, because we haven't sold them. So, well, you, know, you can always, you can always trade them for food after the world ends. Yeah, I think so. That would, that'd be better than gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I really like, uh, so I, I, w- I think the knife community, I think knife people, the EDC community, they recognize one of their own. They know people who are enthusiastic versus people who are trying to turn a buck. And my God, if you're trying to turn a buck in the knife yeah. world, man, re- reorient your your aim and try yeah. something else, probably like real estate or, or yeah. uh, you know, investing or something. Yeah, to, to, to try and pull a fast one in the knife world is insane to me. They'll spit you, you up it. real fast. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll chew you up and spit you out real fast. I mean, it's... I, I, it was a rocky. I mean, it was a rocky start as well. You know, whenever whenever I started, because every, it just seems like everyone's so skeptical of you already, no matter what. But but um, let me let me finish the thought. The thought is, sure. it's obvious that you're a guy who who already has a passion for this stuff. So you're yeah. not trying to put out garbage. You know, no. you're you're designing nice stuff, and you and you have um, you 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 know, you're swimming in the same waters. You know what kind of materials people want. Yep. And, and you're producing this work. And I think people will get behind you. And I think what uh, what most people in your position um, uh, benefit most from is being nimble and being able to hear feedback and be like, oh, yeah, OK, on the next iteration, I'll do this, yep. this and this. And I love you know, that. So what, who are the who are the knife makers and who are the uh, the companies, the knife models, whatever that inspire you that, uh, you know, that got that get you excited outside of your own work? Yeah, I gotta be. Uh, I have to be straight. I, it, every time I see a TRM uh, Three Rivers manufacturing knife, Adam, mm. I I love. I mean, I, I love that design. See, there it is. <laughs> I I appreciate I appreciate knives that are uh, they're not flashy. You know, they're they're built for a purpose, yeah. and they look like they're they're built out of quality materials that are gonna last for a long time. I always think to myself, if I'm going to be stuck in a car, you know, if, if, if I get stuck in a car or stuck in the woods and I have my knife in my pocket, is that knife going to be able to handle the task that I might need it for? Um, and, you know, TRM seems to be, you know, an atom. I've never held one myself, but uh, I, I just love every time I see one. It's it's great. So that so would be I, my number. I think I, I like those the, the most, actually. Uh, this yeah. is, uh, I'm sorry, I just have to concur. I, I just yeah. got this. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, I traded a Medford and got this, yeah. and uh, I I absolutely love it. But if I was a huge knife guy, I mean, if I was a really big, you know, bulky knife guy, I would love the Medford. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it looks like they're overbuilt, and if I was stuck out in the woods, I could definitely chop down a tree with one of those. It would yeah, be great. Yeah. It would be great yeah. to have. But, um, but yeah, for my purposes, yeah, the Atom would, be, would probably be it. Okay, so I want to talk uh, about a, the other model I have. Well, I have three models, but I want to talk about sure. this model, the Silva. Yes. Uh, this this also is a titanium frame lock, mm-hmm. and it also features. Well, this one features S thirty five, as yeah. you mentioned. Uh, this is D two, but this knife, thanks, Jim. Uh, since we're wide, yeah. is uh, very beautifully designed. It's simple, but it's got some some flash to it. Uh, what I love is uh, the neutral handle. It's got a handle that that is very very comfortable, but very comfortable. But it, it allows for you know many different kinds of grips, and it's not, you know, um, it doesn't force you into anything, any sort of posture. What was your? And by the way, beautiful swedge. <laughs> I'm a yeah, swedge. thank you. <laughs> uh, so, what was your? What did, what were you hoping to to? What was your goal for this knife? That's exactly it. I mean, really. I wanted to have a higher, you know, a, a higher end knife with the, the materials that, you know, that I use in the classic a little bit. I wanted to go a step further. I wanted to go a little bit bigger since I think more people, uh, you know, the classic works for a lot of people, but it's, it might be a little bit small for, for most uh, if you wanted to have them use it every day. So I wanted to go a little bit bigger. I usually like to stay between the like the 7.3 and 7.5 overall length. Um, and I'm I'll probably all of, of the next three designs that are coming out, uh, they're all the same, the same size. So that's really what I was going for. It's something that was very minimal and comfortable, you know, comfortable to use. You could always, you know, it, people love the, the, the action when you open it. Mm-hmm. And that's, again, I'm trying to find every hot point that, that somebody when they're looking for a knife would would say, oh, wow, you know, 
oh, it's it's nice looking, but it has to have crappy action. You know, yeah, <laughs> so I want to yeah. make sure that it has great action. Um, someone's going to actually use this. You know, I don't want I don't want it to be a um, just a knife that someone buys and says, "Wow, that looks cool," and then not use it. You could go out and you know you can go out in the woods with this one and and use it just the same as as any other your hard use knives, and it'll perform. Uh, that's really the. It's funny. A lot of people talk about the um, the flipper tab, how it's rather large, mm -hmm. and it is. But it serves two purposes, really. Number one, for the the easy action, and number two, it's for the um, you know the guard. Yeah. So I, yeah. I I wanted it to have it as a guard because when you're when you're cutting something, I mean, you want a little bit of guard, <laughs> yes. and uh, it works out perfectly that way. And I think it looks good. I mean, it's that's just my preference. It does look good. It looks a little shark-like, which is cool. I have never been, been bothered by large flipper tabs. Only flipper tabs whose uh, design isn't optimized for flipping the knife open. Right. Uh, uh, let, I, I want to um, I, I want to tell you about some of the observations I've made about this knife. Sure. Uh, uh, first of all, you have a filler tab on the on the offhand side, the left hand side, or yep. if you put your deep carry pocket clip, which is a very nice clip. On Thank the you. other side, hey, you're welcome. You've got the filler tab. That's a little, that's kind of a premium touch, if you will. Uh, I'm left handed. Like ah. Yeah, I'm left handed. So I, I can't, I can't not do it, you know, from the <laughs> left is out there. Good for you. You should have just yeah. put the lock on the other side and make us learn how to, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Let's see how many people would really learn that. <laughs> so you've got a, a very nicely, uh, uh, everything is very uh, comfortable in the hand. It's, it's yeah. beautiful chamfered uh it's very solid it's thin uh a yeah. lot of people like thin i i'm a big knife guy so i go i i like thin for in the waistband i like you know so i can go um so this this is thin it's very light you've got a lock bar uh stabilizer slash uh lock bar insert you know insert. so that it's steel on steel at the lock bar interface it's got s35 vn uh and 6AL4V, presumably titanium. I think that's the only titanium anyone uses, friend. Yeah. And, and, and what do you charge for this knife? Yeah, this one is, uh, so originally it was 9850. And and I try to, here's a secret. <laughs> I'm able to, to offer a lower price for all of my knives because I don't have the overhead that all of the other companies have. Uh, really, I mean, it's it's me dealing with it. I pack every knife. You know, I, I inspect every knife before I send them out. I do all the designing. I, you know, if you order the, the upgraded clip for the knife, I'm the one who takes it off and puts it on. You know, I'm the one who makes sure that uh, the, the blade centered, you know, and it, I don't have the overhead that a lot of people have. And that's, that was my advantage um, coming into this market that I was able to get the better quality steel and the better quality materials for knives and still keep them lower because I don't have, you know, a bunch of people that I have to pay. Um, right. to do the quality control and everything else. Uh, now my family helps me out a lot as well. And uh, God bless my wife. Cause she's, you know, she stood behind me. And whenever I told her about this, she thought I was crazy. <laughs> you know, who does, who does this, but she's, and we had a, you know, a newborn at, he was almost one by the time I, I got this, but, um, that was a big, that was a big ask on my end. And she, you know, she probably rolled her eyes a few times, but uh, you know, she, she went with it and, um, God bless her for it. Yeah, but man. Right on. That's my secret. Thank God for the supportive spouse. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> they, they, say, uh, they say babies are born, and I think this is a Bolivian saying, but babies are born with a loaf of bread under their arm, meaning you have a baby and it puts a fire under your ass. You're like, what else am I going to do? Okay, I got this real estate thing humming. What else? What else? What uh, else? So, yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, that was the only time. It was it was a risk for sure, but it, it, was, it seemed like the right time to – to take that risk, you know, if I was ever going to do it, I'd do it, I'd do it now. And I'm a little bit impatient anyway. So mm -hmm. it was Good. something that's always been in my head. And I'm sure you might be the same way that um, I figured I, I'll just try it now. And if it, if it works out, then great. If not, I could say I tried it and, you know, yeah. tell my son, Hey, I named the company after you can go anywhere, but yeah. <laughs> I named them after you and I can give them the, you know, I've been not a too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Kidding. I, we we made a time we made a time capsule for his 18th birthday, and I put a classic in the time capsule for him just to you know remind him. So I'm sorry, but that's so, that's very cool. On his 18th birthday, he's gonna be not only do I get to yeah. open this 
cool thing, but I get a knife out of it. And that's right. Yeah. His mom might you know, not be so happy about that, but yeah, I'm going to give him his knife on his 18th birthday for sure. <laughs> so on your folders, you use um, uh, frame locks and then you also use the axis style lock, the yeah. ambidextrous bar lock, whatever you want to call yeah. it. So yeah. how did, how did you decide on those two uh, um, locking mechanisms? Well, you know, everybody loves the the axis style lock. So a lot of the things that I that I put into the you know my folders, I I do have to keep in mind what everybody loves, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you look on Insta, you know, all the pictures that people post, yeah, I have to think what what do people like? What are the features that people like? You know, they like nice G10. Now it's my Carta, but you know, they like they like nice G10 handles. They like more solid, you know, it's a solid knife that they can take and, you know, beat up a little bit and it still works, works great. Uh, and they like the access lock and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't think, um, I don't think I'll be doing the access lock for, for much longer after this, after these, these models. Uh, number one, I'm, I like the frame lock best, best of all. That's, that's just my preference. And I have a model coming out, um, you know, in a probably two, Two months, it'll be it'll be ready. Um, it, it it it's the Nomad with a frame lock, basically, and yeah. So there's a steel steel side, G10 side with the with the frame lock, and I just I just like it to be honest. And I the I, I include two extra Omega springs, you know, Omega style springs, yeah. because. But it, the thing that I I don't like, and our springs are, are I make sure that they're a little bit um, thicker, so they're they're stronger because I know that. They they tend to break, and yeah, never happened to me. But I I hear I hear talk. Yeah, I hear I hear people talking about it all the time that they you know they, they have them break, and to be honest, I don't think I, I'd want that in my you know in my knife that I depend on for you know um, it could it could be depending on it for a life you know a life situation. And um, I know that they're strong, but it still has that ability to you know to break at some point. Yeah, you're relying on something that's so it's like uh it's like um everything on the head of a pin. It's like civilization hinging on electricity. Well, what happens yeah. if electricity goes away? It's Go, the everything same. goes crazy. And and plus uh with the with the uh you're right, with a with a uh, frame lock in particular, your grip reinforces the lock. Yeah. Uh you know, in a way that no other lock really does that, except the scorpion lock, but you would have to yeah. license that from uh, Mr. Demko. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um but uh I yeah, at I think you have it nailed because people also like their knives as fidget items. This one is never, fidgety. Yeah, that's the one thing that, that I didn't really like the same thing. I didn't what, think what, I didn't think about fidget factor whenever I was I was starting this out. I didn't think that was such a, a big port part of selling knives, the fidget yeah. factor. I'm it's not, kind of embarrassing to admit. It's a it real is, thing though, you know. It and, is. And and luckily uh you intuitively honed in on 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 the uh, uh on that that is cool that is the what what is that that's not the nomad that's the no this is the uh yeah this is the sentry and this is the one with uh bearings so i don't it doesn't really come up yeah, yeah it's the gray with yeah. the uh yeah the white backspacer there yeah, and which you sell extra on the website you can you can get your white backspacer which is cool so yeah, fit and on bearings i love it i mean really this is how it was supposed to be when it when i first started um, so I made my first order and talk about crazy. I made my first order and there was a language barrier issue whenever I placed the order. So I was marketing these as, you know, uh, ball bearing. I get the, the shipment in, um, I take apart the first knife and washers fall out uh. and I, I almost died. Really? I, I didn't sleep that night and it was, it was terrible. I had to tell everybody that pre-ordered, you know, everyone that ordered a knife. Everyone basically that hey this doesn't have bearings you know I know you're you're excited about bearings but it doesn't have bearings you know we'll, I'll give your money back <laughs> and a lot of people and I'm sure you know Peter uh, Peter Hartman um, a therapeutic oh, yeah, edge yeah. Uh -huh. yeah he's been a great guy uh, he was like he emailed me he's like really you know I know that's got to be tough I still take you know I'll still take the one with the, the watchers and try it out and he's been a he's been a big um, supporter of me you know yeah, yeah, really so starting out yeah. So wait, uh, tell me true. How many people said no? I don't want it if it doesn't have bearings. Not one. Yeah, I was I was really surprised. Yeah, 
that 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 feels so good to hear. And I, I, yeah. I didn't, so I was gonna be like, who's no one's that fickle that, unless they are. <laughs> they're out of the money and they're like, I don't want to tell this guy I don't have the money to to pay him. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, not one. I was lucky. I gotta get because believe me, I, my hair grew gray overnight. You know, just from that situation, it was rough. How did how did it work on the bearings? Um. Oh well. So this new shipment that'll be in actually uh, this week, um, and I'll be fully in stock with the bearings. I'm sorry. But, I mean, how did it work on the washers? Uh, it wasn't great to start, to be honest, because I, I I wasn't it, it didn't have the action that I that I really wanted it to have, and I just kicked myself because I didn't know everything that I should have known at that point. Whenever I got those and I was selling them, so I'd send them out to people. I'd get emails back saying, hey, I love the knife. I love, you know, the design. The blade is super sharp. But the action, you know, when I flip it, it's it'll I, – I would flip it, and it would, like, end, like, right here. You know, it would never fully – because it was so tight. So then I, you know, I actually placed a large order for uh, bronze, you know, phosphor bronze washers. I replaced those. It worked well, but then there was blade play. Uh, you know, there was always blade play. A bit. So I was going crazy trying to figure this out. You know, I, I would sit there and, and work with a knife and there would be no play play at all. You know, it'd be perfect open shut. I'd send it to somebody and they'd email me back saying, hey, this is a great knife, but I, there's blade play. What can I do about it? So I'm like, you know, is the mailman screwing me over? Or what? <laughs> like, what's what's going on here? Um, but I finally figured out that uh, that I use uh, Teflon washers now in, in, the, in the original ones. They give people because i phosphor bronze you have to break in i mean you have to break them in for you know it takes like two weeks or of flipping back and forth and some people just are you know they're not uh patient enough for that so if you don't open it out of the box and it's like flippy and excuse me and uh perfect then they contact me they're you know they want a new one or they they want me to help them out and i want to you know i want them to be happy hmm. um and i'll bend over backwards to make the customers happy. I don't care if they're paying, you know, I, I do a lot of coupon codes um, to give people deals so they can try the knife out. And I don't care if they, you know, got 50% off of the knife. I'll, you know, if, it, if they have a problem with it, I'll send them a new one. And sometimes I let them keep, you know, the one that they have, if I can't, you know, if it, if it doesn't make sense for me to take it back and I can't resell it. So I just say, Hey, you know, use, use that knife as a beater. And then, you know, if you like another model that comes out, Think about you know purchasing one you know, for me, yeah. and they do, and that people are happy with that. Uh, let me ask you about the design, if you would uh, hold up the yeah. the Sentry for a second. Um, it, if you look at the Sentry compared to um, say the Nomad and and the um, uh, well and the Classic and uh, and the Silva, yeah. the Nomad something with the harpoon and the and the um, and the fuller, there's something about this design that seems to be striving for something different. Yeah, uh, I was scared. I was scared to death to to produce this <laughs> because I, I, it, uh, it. I think it's a. I think it's. I think you nailed something here. Um, yeah. What, what were you looking at to to do with this one? Right here, <laughs> this. So I was able. You know, if I'm able to to get four fingers on it and put my thumb here, so when I'm you know, carving wood, or if someone were to, you know, open, even open a box, you know, mm -hmm. the fuller is really just the design choice. It doesn't obviously doesn't serve much other than looking sweet. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, I, I, it lightens the blade though. That's also good. It does. Yeah. It lightens, it lightens the blade. It does, but really it, it just adds to the character of the blade. And it's, it's different because I, I haven't seen it. Um, I hadn't seen it anywhere, you know, and, I just it with with this handle shape, it just seemed like it was as soon as they, they they gave me the rendering after I you know I gave them all my my information and told them what I was looking for and gave them design um, gave them the design cues. Uh, when I got the rendering back, I was like, oh man, that's gonna be fantastic. I mean, it's yeah. I, I really did. I, I love the, the way it looked, but I was nervous because it was so different that. Um, you know, what if people say, "Wow, is that ugly?" <laughs> you know? no, 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 no. It's the same, yeah. different. It's it, it's in the same galaxy, but it's got it's got those couple of extra flourishes. The thumb swale, I love that. Yeah, because you know, intuitively, you want to jam your thumb into that and really get some right. power. 
And uh, I, I'm a sucker for a fuller. It also looks like I look at that. I'm like, you could Spidey flick with that. You know, I'm sure you have a bunch of people doing that too. Um, yeah. So wh where, where do you see your knives going in terms of design? Um, first, let's talk about the folders. Yeah. So uh, everything that I'm going to make and I could send you, you know, the three that are coming out over the next three, you know, four months, the one that's coming out, I should get the 20 samples of them uh, sometime next week or the week after that. And uh, it's called the Spiro, you know, it's, uh, it's a, a liner lock with, you know, the G10 with the hidden liners, you know, inside the G10, mm -hmm. uh, S35 VN, a bigger, you know, a thicker blade, uh, kind of, a still a drop point, you know, style blade, but every knife that I want to make is one that you would feel confident in having in your pocket no matter what will pop up it's kind of hard to do <laughs> i guess and I'll, I'll i'll keep trying you know and every, every model i to i try to you know keep that in mind but i'm not fancy i i don't carry fancy knives you know i i don't all my like my i carry a nomad like pretty much every day and i'm in property management so i have caulking you know i have i have stuff all over the the g10 I really want to give a knife that you don't care about, you know, screwing up, you know, your hands full of caulk. It, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. Your hands full of caulking and, you know, you don't, you don't mind using it and you don't mind, um, you know, you just using it day to day. And that's really what I'm shooting for. And, uh, something that's solid and they, they hold it and say, wow, this feels great. You know, I'm happy that I purchased it is really the ultimate goal. <laughs> I'm just, I'm happy that I purchased the knife. So I I, uh, I I surmised all of that, except I would add to your <laughs> uh, to your assessment of your own goal that you want to do it in uh, uh, like with the highest quality materials because everything you're you're saying I'm like yes yes of course yes of course but for the price point yeah. titanium and S thirty five it's it's great and and much earlier we were talking about uh, you know how you fund uh, these and and that oh maybe it's a fool's errand to fund your own uh, to fund your own uh, effort like that. But I think, I think there are a number of ways of looking at it in a sense, you know, immediately, I think I put it, things in my own context. You're like a TV producer. You're like a film producer. You're, you're, you're taking, yeah. you know, you're using your own design, but you're, you're taking all the best people, putting them together to make the product that you can for what you're going to charge. But right. um, the, the fact that, that you're doing it um, in such a way that a, you're, you're a knife guy and that comes through. Mm -hmm. And B, you're offering all of that at an affordable price for with materials that other people, other larger companies uh, cannot compete with. I think that's a pretty nice little niche. That's what I'm trying to go. I, I would love to say, you know, at this, at this point that I, I would never go over the $100 mark. You know, that's really what I shot, I've shot for, that I I'd love to produce these knives um, every new design, but it's under a hundred dollars because personally, I, I used to find it really hard to, to justify spending over a hundred dollars for a knife. Um, that was just a personal preference of mine. Uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, a hundred dollars is like, well, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll spend a hundred dollars on this night, you know, no matter what. But, um, I, I really wanted to make them available to the most amount of people. I saw that there was sort of a gap between the you know the forty to fifty dollar you know budget. There's a lot of competition in that in that arena with the D2 steel, and I'm I'm sure at some point S35 will be the D2. You know, uh, it'll it'll probably get knocked down to the D2, and then there'll be another like um, uh, S20V. You know, that's that's like the new the new bill that uh, that's surpassing M390. I, I'm sure some people would, would disagree with me, but I never want to go over the hundred dollar mark because I don't think we need to, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, I was, I was just going to say, it's totally not necessary. It's a luxury item, you know, being a knife collector, which is what I am is yeah. a materialistic pursuit and, and you're, you're collecting luxury items. I mean, you know, what am I ever going to use this thing for? But I love it. Yeah. You but know? you love like, it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, but I, I think, I'm What's sorry, that? I'm sorry, real quick. But with that said, uh, some of the, the makers that do these knives and it, it really blows my mind, you know, that the way that they're able to do, do these, these custom knives, 
thousand dollars for one of those i i completely understand why you'd want because that there really is an investment and you feel really great having uh a knife like that you know because yeah. it's yeah. The, the quality is just it's, top notch i mean it's more than a knife at that point when you're buying a handmade custom knife it's more than a knife you're buying the yeah. story you're buying a little piece of that person it's a it's it's a bit of a work of art but it's also design because you can use it absolutely um, you know uh but uh you were talking about uh, s35 getting knocked down to d2 status eventually and all that all of that will happen but but nothing is going to take away yeah. from the fact that s35 vn is such a user-friendly steel in every single it way is. that it is. that uh and, and i used to think d2 is that way too but you know you got the rust thing so yeah. i mean if you can I, I I don't <laughs> now. This is me talking like an old fart, uh, you know, who's yeah. ready to die. But I mean, like, do we need <laughs> anything more than M three ninety? Yeah, do we need to kick S thirty five en down to D two status. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> you don't need anything until until it comes up, and then you say, oh well, maybe we did need it. You know, it's just yeah. it's one of those things where you don't. It's the best. I, I saw somewhere online where uh, someone said, well, I'm old enough to remember when 440C was like the, the miracle steel. You know? <laughs> yeah. And now if now you see 440C on the knife, you'd be like, oh, God, garbage. Yeah, I, don't exactly. even, I don't even let, I don't even cut the string off my collar with That's that. That's exactly <laughs> right. It would never cut the thing. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, just like buck knives, you know, they use this is this is a big thing. They use 420, you know, they use yeah. 420, I think, in most of their in most of their models. And. The way they heat treat it, it's great. I mean, I've had quite a few buck knives, and and I'm really happy with them. I mean, they hold an edge well. Um, so you know, it's just I guess it's really how you how you process it and how you heat treat it. But um, I noticed that S35VN is a great all around steel. It's higher, you know, it's high enough end where it, somebody feels like they're getting a, a really good steel for the price, and um, you could use it for a long time, and you don't have to sharpen it very much. Yeah. So, so uh i have to ask uh, sure um I, how do you feel how does asher knives feel about uh disclosing who manufactures the various models are you is this yeah. something that's that's open or what mm, not really <laughs> to be honest i mean i i have a uh, i use a small a smaller factory in hong kong so i deal with the lady in hong kong she's basically the rep that that i deal with I give her all of the designs that I make, you know, they have a design team that'll, you know, put that design and make sure it fits into what they do. Mm -hmm. Then they send it back to me. So she's my point of contact. And that was the, the, you know, the, that was probably the, the easiest way for me to, um, uh, move the, the really move the process forward was meeting, you know, this, this manufacturer and they, they came on at a time where I was actually, I lost a, a decent amount of money on uh, a previous manufacturer after the classics. Okay. And, you know, it was, it was just a bad, it was a, it was a rookie mistake on my end. And I, I trusted a, a, a bad manufacturer mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm lucky that I didn't lose a, you know, a, a really good chunk of money. And, and, but I, I cut ties with them. I found this other, you know, manufacturer. They've been fantastic. Um, even though there was that language barrier issue with the, the washers, mm -hmm. um, their quality is is really great, and that's what I was looking for. And um, you know, they're they're really eager to to make me satisfied with each product they sell. So, or they they send me. I I, I mean, I I have to say, I know these are two different. These are manufactured by two different companies. Yeah. But you found, I mean, these are both really, really nicely made knives. And I was, I was going to uh, attempt to, I mean, who knows? I don't know. I was going to try and guess, oh, maybe it's this company or that company. But yeah. I, I realized that I know, <laughs> I know such a slender slice of the yeah. pie. But uh, I, I have to say they're, they're very, very nicely made. And uh, um I, I I I like them very much, and and I then appreciate both, that. Uh, uh, also, um, you have this fixed blade knife that I just received uh, right. from from Justin as well. What is your goal with the with the fixed blade? Before you, before you answer that question, let me say what yeah. I like about this. Sure, I I love the short handle. Um, I I am uh, especially in the winter time a an EDC fixed blade knife carrier. Yeah. And uh, one thing I like, and I wear it in the waistband, and one thing I like is a short handle, especially if it's yeah. rounded on that 
so that it can rest like this, you know, on the small of my back and I don't feel it. And you really don't feel it. Yeah. What were you going for uh, with this, with this three and a half inch cutting edge, four inch bladed knife? Yeah. So uh, full disclosure on that, on that model, I didn't design that myself. Um, that was one of the models where it was offered. It was offered to me, you know, they showed me the, the something they had already pre-made. I like the D3, EC3, EC53 steel. Yeah. And I, I went with it because it was, you know, it was a nice, it was a nice fixed blade model. I mean, it was, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. It's, it's really quality made. Um, I've gotten nothing but great feedback on that, you know, on that knife. I've used it myself. One of my, uh, I actually wanted to show you. Uh, oh, nice. One of the guys that I that I've gotten to to know pretty well from the EDC community is the leather and lumber goods. His name's Chris, and he loves you know he he ended up liking this knife a lot. He made a, a custom sheath for me. <laughs> so Sweet. this is yeah this is my you know this is my personal you know personal tracker. So but, this is um, a tracker. This is a I, I really dig this knife, man. It is. It's, yeah, man. It's it, it's comfortable. And I've never really been into the, I do like fixed blades a lot, but I've never been able to EDT a fixed blade because it's just not practical in what I, what I do. Yeah. If, if I'm out, you know, outside all the time, I can see that. And that's what I was going for. It's something that would take most jobs that you give it if you're out, you know, wherever you are, but it's still, you know, pretty comfortable to carry around and you don't mind, you know, you don't mind EDTing it if you're, you know, if you prefer to EDT a fixed blade. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, but I do have, you know, I do have quite a few other designs for fixed blades. That was kind of a risk for me because I didn't know how well they would sell. Um, but this one did, you know, that one did very well. Uh, I ran out of them actually, nice. and I'm looking, I'm looking to to do another run probably early next year of, uh, of something similar, probably in the similar steel as well because the DC fifty three lasts. I mean, I cut down a tree. My wife and I went on a little. You know, little staycation um, about an hour away from Pittsburgh, and we went for a hike. I just wanted to try it out. I batoned a tree <laughs> and used it for a walking stick. You know, and it, it was still sharp. I mean, it still split hairs. You know, so it was. I was happy with that. DC fifty three. I've never heard of DC fifty three. Yeah, I wasn't too familiar with it when I first when I first saw it either. But after reading up on it, um, I decided to take a risk on it, and it, it it's it's like a step up from uh, D2. It has finer, you know, it, the grains are finer, so you can get a finer edge and it holds just as long, if, if not longer of an edge than D2. And it's just easier to sharpen. So that was always my gripe with D2 is I can never get it sharp enough. Mm. You know, um, you could, you, you, you can get a great cutting working edge, you know, it'll cut all day long. It'll keep that edge, but I can never get it like actually 440 C. I love, I love sharpening that because you can get it like a razor scalpel and you know, I don't mind touching up a blade here and there, but um, yeah, that's why I went with it and it, it worked out because I do like it a lot. I mean, it's, it's a nice blade still and there's not much of it either. I mean, there's not much of it out there. Yeah, no, no, I haven't, I haven't heard much of it, but you know, there, there are lots of different blade steels uh, recently RWL. Suddenly I started hearing about that. Um, yeah. So, so Asher knives, where do you see yourself going with this? Is this going to be a family company? Is, is your son Asher? So. All right. So tell me, yeah. tell me where you see the, the company itself in, you know, in the future, 10 years, 10 years. Uh, I, I really just want to be known for a good customer service and a quality knife. Um, there's a lot of big companies that, that are known for, you know, known for that knife world. Um, a lot of them, or you know it's it, it's well deserved obviously because they've been around for so long and they do right by their customers and being in real estate that's that's my number one i deal with people all all day long i talk to people i deal with problems i deal with you know fixed solutions um and i just want to always i i want the people that buy my knives to always be happy with the purchase and be satisfied with their knife whenever they use it um that's my biggest that's my biggest outlook. So if I can continue to do that and people still, you know, have the, the, um, if they're still eager to buy my designs, which is also a nice little pat on the back because I, 
I always like when people like my designs because it comes out of my head and I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know <laughs> if anyone else is going to like it. Right. You know, it's a big risk. But um, if they like the designs and they like the quality and, you know, my customer service is there and they'll always talk to me. Uh, yeah, I, I deal with everybody that, that buys, you know, my knives and I stand behind them uh, because I can't sleep if I, you know, if somebody had a an issue and I did them, it would just drive me insane. You know, so I can't, I can't do that. So uh, where do people find your knives? Are you on uh, any of uh, the distributors or go right to your website? What's up? No, no, they go right to the website. Yeah. Asherknives.com and uh, you know, Instagram, Asher knives. Uh, I'm on Reddit as well. Asher underscore knives. Um, I, that's the other kind of maybe downside for, to my personality is I have to have my hands on every one that I sell. Mm -hmm. I don't like, to sell, you know, send a hundred or 200 to a distributor. And then, you know, I don't, I don't know who's buying them. I don't know, you know, how they're, they're sending them out. You know, if there's a Nick on the blade um, and they send it out to somebody, then all of a sudden on Instagram, somebody types in, Oh, I just got an Asher knives and it's in, in mm. terrible, excuse me, in terrible shape. You know, there's a Nick on the blade, my blades chipped or something. These things happen. I mean, you know, out of 500 knives, 30 or 50 of them could be, you know, in, in, in rough shape from the factory. And I just write that off as a cost of doing business at that point. Um, but I won't send that out to somebody, uh, you know, so that's, I'm kind of anal about that. <laughs> so well, sometimes I miss, I miss some things, obviously, you know, whenever I'm sending out a, a, a decent amount of orders, but I always make it right if I do. I, I have no doubt that uh, the people who are buying your knives are appreciative of that, you know, that you have a hands-on approach and that you care so much. I mean, after all, you are a knife guy and you would not want to, you would not want to receive something that you're so excited. You know how pumped you get before you get a knife. Exactly. And shows up. Exactly. And, yeah, you're wrong up. and it comes and it's not right. <laughs> you know, well, anyway, it's, it's bad. It, well, it is. It is because it, that echoes through, you know, through time, you know, and, and you yes. don't want people that it, it takes a, a lot to get something back than it got, than it does to just maintain it. So it does. Yeah. And it hurts. It hurts. I, I take it personally, really. I mean, I know you shouldn't, but I do. Whenever there's a bad, a bad experience, I take it personally and I want to make sure it's right. So, well, that taking it personally is probably what makes it better you know, makes you, puts the fire under your butt to make it right. Uh, Justin Cotton, I want to thank you so yeah. much. Uh, Justin Cotton of Asher Knives. Thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. And uh, yeah, uh, before I let you go, before I let you go, sir, I just want to, I just want to get one word of advice. Not one, sure. one, one little bit of advice that you might I'll give to someone, to someone, <laughs> yeah, to someone in your position. Oh, no, no. I'm asking you to give some. Oh, okay. To someone, I thought you were going to give me some advice. Who I'll might, take, yeah, I'll take I'll any give advice. Some advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you need new headphones. No, I don't know. I have no advice yeah. for you. I want you to give advice to the to the people who uh, who might be in a similar position you were a couple of years ago. Want to start a knife company? Yeah. Uh, really, if you if you have the if you have the, the the amount of capital, and it doesn't take too much to start it start it you know start it out, but if if you have a solid backing in that end, really take. Give yourself two months of, uh, you know, really looking into the process of, of from start to finish, from designing to to manufacturing a knife. And you could reach out to me. You know, I'm, I'm OK with that. I'd be happy buddy, the, the kind of the short notes of, of how to do that, because I don't think there's a lot of people out there that, that would tell you, you know, well, this is what I did and this is how you have to do it on this, you know, down this line. This is what you have to look for and the manufacturers and. So if you could find someone that will do that, that would be your best bet. But if you can't just, you know, take two months if you're really serious about it and try to, you know, really try to follow the leads to, to get there. And you'll feel a lot more satisfied whenever you do get there because you know, it's hard, <laughs> but you know, you're, you, you made it to that point. So you know, it'll feel great. A battle hard one. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Justin. Uh, take care. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, sir. Yeah, Bob, it was great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. Talk to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. All right, back on the uh, Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 154. And Bob, the first word that came to my mind about this interview was fun. I really enjoyed that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And oh, man, I love hearing 
people's, uh, you know that I bristle at the use of the word journey, but <laughs> People who start knife companies really do embark on a journey, and uh, it's always it's very cool tonight for me to hear of uh, Justin's story, going from just a knife guy uh, who you know likes and and buys and uses knives to a guy who's actually making them. And uh, to me, you know, I can't help but think. I, I mean, I see this in my own life, but I, I see this clearly in a lot of these people that we're talking to is taking experiences from your day job, from your life, from the other non-knife stuff and, and you know, taking the lessons and the attributes distilled from those experiences and putting them to work in your in your in your passion right. project, you know, right. and, and, you know, no doubt. Justin is a smart guy and he's gotten a lot of those smarts from working in the real estate game and he's putting them all to use in his passion, making knives. So to me, that's inspirational. Right. Well, and I, I really loved your, uh, your selfish question at the end about what, what would someone do if they what were interested <laughs> in starting a knife company? I don't know. I'm just asking yeah. for Say someone. there's this guy and he yeah. looks just like me. Yeah. His name's Bob. You know, what a would book Bob full do? of designs. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just getting a vicarious buzz from all these other people making knives yeah. and, and really enjoying getting their knives in hand. And Jim, this one, the classic, I mentioned it on last week's podcast. This is so up your alley, sir. Yeah. So, uh, nice you know, like a knife. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you've received anything in the mail yet, but it's not this, but next year it might be this. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Look forward Jim, to that. Yeah. Well, and uh, as we've talked about uh, once or twice before on some other podcast episodes, I think uh, uh, Justin, as you said, very smart guy, and, and looking at that that niche or niche in the marketplace, that sub one hundred dollar uh, price oh, point God. that yeah. uh, you know can capitalize on that. So uh, some, that, some smarts up there too. Yeah, I got to say that was a smart move too because um, people people look at the sub $100 uh, range of folding knives and they have certain expectations and, and using titanium and S 35 VN yeah. and this like uh, beautiful construction kind of blows those expectations out of the water. Right. Right. And, you know, I guess when you're starting a new business, you want to disrupt things a little bit. And Absolutely. I think that's what these do. Nicely done, sir. All right. Again, you can find them asherknives.com online, asherknives.com. Thanks to uh, Justin for being with us, uh, Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, sitting right there to my that way, whichever way you are. <laughs> but uh, right. for Bob the Knife Junkie, I'm the knife newbie, Jim Person, thanking you for joining us on this episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.